Hello folks, uh, Bill Wilson here. I'm here with my old friend, uh, Masad Ayub, and we're gonna today uh, talk a little bit about uh, comparison of the M9 platform Beretta 92 series gun uh, in comparison to the new SIG 320 platform. Masad, welcome. Hey, it's good to be back, Bill. Yeah. Masad, uh, what do you think are the strengths of the 92 series? What do you consider its best features? Well, certainly the, the proven reliability, smoothness of action, uh, decent triggers to start, and outstanding triggers once they've been worked on. Uh, downsides, you know, every, fe every feature can be either a feature or a bug. Uh, with the double action, you have the long, heavy trigger pull that many people find difficult. And if you're in an institutional environment where there's very limited training time per armed individual, yeah. Uh, that is an issue to overcome. You've also got the, the need to decock the firearm, uh, which you don't have with the striker fired, which of course also has the single trigger pull. Uh, here, if we've forgotten to, uh, to decock, basically anything that hits that trigger is essentially what a layman might call a hair trigger. Uh, that's why the the single uniform trigger pull on the striker-fired guns tends to be somewhat heavier mm -hmm. than a cocked uh, traditional double action. The downside with the, the military version, the uh, 92F series uh, adopted as M9 by the military, was that they taught overhand slide manipulation, which tended, if the safety was off, you're doing like a reload or clearing a malfunction, as the hand came over, it would hit that lever and put it basically on safe and you try to shoot and nothing would happen. With the, uh, the SIG, of course, the striker fired gun, that's not a problem. Now the military version, the M17, has the ambidextrous safety here at the back that works down for fire, up for safe, like the old familiar 1911. And most people find that more ergonomic. Mainly, there's no way you can accidentally on safe it coming over at the top with the, the so-called GI or saddle method of slide manipulation. That was one reason I always taught with the, the M9 or similar guns, you know, the Walther and other, other pistols with the safety decock lever. If you use the Israeli method with the thumb forward, it tended to pinch the lever in place and if it was, off, if it was on the fire position when you worked the slide, it would stay on fire. If it was on the safe position when you worked the slide, it would stay on safe. Mm -hmm. well, what do you think about the 320? What, what do you like and dislike about the 320? It's made a lot of friends. Ethan Lassard did a brilliant job with the design. The bore axis is a little bit high, but with 9mm, I, I don't feel any significant increase in recoil. Uh, I think the big thing about it is the, the ergonomics of the interchangeable grip sleeves, the, the grip modules. Uh, here with the, the relatively long trigger reach. Uh, you know, everybody says the gun has to fit your hand and they never give you the dimensions. Uh, the key element is trigger reach, measured on the gun from the grip tang at the center where the web of the hand would be to the center of the face of the trigger where the trigger finger is going to be. I have the supposedly average size adult male hand and with that straightened with the barrel straight in line with the long bones of the forearm, I can get the, the pad of my finger, the fingerprint, if you will, on there, but not the distal joint. And remember, the long, heavy trigger pull, the heavier it is, the more leverage we need. The deeper the finger gets, the more leverage you have. With the P320, in the same position, I can get much more finger on there, which gives me much more leverage, and therefore, significantly more control. And it's gonna be critically important for your smaller shooter because, for instance, your typical petite female put her hands against an average size adult male hand, it'll be about one digit shorter. Well, that means on here, if it's one digit shorter, she's barely able to touch that trigger, and that's why you see some very small-handed people that literally can't pull the trigger on this gun or have a heck of a time doing it. Uh, this gun will fit them a lot better, and I think that's one reason it's become so popular, particularly as a general issue gun to a broad spectrum of individuals of different hand sizes. Mm -hmm. Well, kind of my version of it, Masad, is the 92, which you know I've, I've been a fan of it ever, ever since uh, uh, Mr. Robbins was 
initially yeah. test doing the initial testing for the, for the Air Force. Um, things I think you've already mentioned, reliability, accuracy, decent trigger pulls out of the box, stuff like that. So that's, that's, those are all pluses. But uh, one of the other things I really like about it is the soft recoil impulse. They, they have probably the softest recoil of any uh, handgun, any nine millimeter handgun on the market. And the other thing I like about them is the, the trigger pull. You know, I mean, we're all revolver guys, so this double action trigger doesn't bother us at all. You know, it's no big deal. But, you know, most double singles, they, they'll, have the, they'll, they'll have the trigger way forward and for the double action. And then when you fire the second shot, the trigger is way, way back. And so you got, you got to kind of hunt for the trigger for the second shot. Well, on the, on the Beretta, if you'll notice where the trigger uh, location is when the hammer actually falls here, that's got about now. Okay, that's the same place it is when you fire it single action. So you don't hunt for the trigger. You know, you fire you fire the first shot double action, and you fire the second shot single action, and the trigger's in the same basic location when the hammer falls. So that's a feature that I that I think makes this double action superior over other type of double actions. Strong point. But what you've also got to look at, particularly with a military weapon, is the durability, the repairability factor, and all that. We're all familiar with uh, what Wilson has done with the Beretta, uh, greatly Im improving it in many ways. Now you have gone with uh, the SIG P320 with a Wilson combat modification, and I'd be interested to hear the details on how, how you've done that. Yeah, so we've got a, a really good working relationship with uh, SIG, you know, both uh, with the ammo company and also, you know, with the firearms division. And uh, we're doing a collaboration with them. And so basically what the program is, um, let me progress here. The Beretta program, you know, as far as a Brig Tac or a Centurion Tactical or whatever, you know, we spec'd all the, the specifications out and tightened up some tolerances and stuff like that. And, and Beretta builds the complete guns and they come in by the pallets, you know, finished. Okay. And then, you know, we resell them. Okay. The SIG program is a little bit different. Uh, a lot more work at Wilson Combat on it. The guns come in uh, with the interior dimensions of the slide all machined, all the interior stuff, and the outside's just left plain. And so we've got to do a lot of machine work on the outside of it, and we put our sights on it and, and you know, all that sort of stuff. And then uh, uh, we put our module, you know, our, our uh, SIG 320 module on, on the uh, chassis and, uh, and the top end. And, you know, when it gets done, it's kind of a, a Wilsonized version of a SIG 320, you know, which we feel has uh, a lot of uh, ergonomic improvements over the the standard receiver that's kind of round you know and, and uh, uh, it's you know in our opinion it's much more controllable much more shootable you know platform now looking at it from user perspective the interchangeable uh, grip modules are going to make a, a huge positive advantage for the smaller to larger handed uh, people who are issued them or private sector people on the internals each of these guns, like every gun, has had some teething pains, even the 1911. Uh, one of the complaints I hear about the P320 is that the fire control uh, unit is, once you get it apart, awfully tiny. Now, you started as a watchmaker, became a master gunsmith, worldwide mm -hmm. famous, and now a manufacturer. There's nobody better than you to comment on the, the durability and repairability factor, if you will, of the P320 series, the M17. Well, as I mentioned to you at lunchtime, uh, there's a lot of parts, a lot of little parts in this gun. And, and you know, on the surface, you think, ooh, that, you know, that could potentially be fragile. But uh, time has proven out that the platform is very robust and very dependable. You know, I mean, it went, it, it went through so much uh, rigorous military testing. You know, you just don't get through that if, if things are breaking all the time, you know. And so it's, it's kind of proven in the field to be durable and, and dependable. And, uh, you know, they're, they're pretty easy to get to part, you know, to get apart in everything. I mean, you know, the, the work that I've personally done on the, on the guns, the most difficult thing I've ran into is the first time I changed out a mag catch. You know, of course, I tried to do it the way the manual said to do it. <laughs> but we have, 
folks, we have a video that shows you how to do that. So, uh, but anyway, there's, it's real easy when you know how to do it and real hard when you don't know how to do it. Well, thanks for that contribution. Yeah. Uh, we're seeing, I, I know in the private sector and classes, we're seeing a whole lot more P320s uh, every year. Now, they made the, the one the military adopted, the M17, had the ambidextrous frame mounted manual safety. Uh, you told me that you had some, in, some insight from SIG on what percentage of the guns are coming through that way to the private sector. Yeah, they, they said it's not one of their better sellers. You know, it's, you know, as my wife always says in the scheme of things, it's, you know, it's, it's a slower seller as opposed to the versions without the, the manual safety. Yeah, the current trends seem to be at a point and shoot. Mm -hmm. Uh, the safety manipulation, I think, is going to be easier on the M17 because it works like the 1911, and of course it's ambidextrous for either thumb. Uh, with the 92FS, the, essentially the M9 version, what you have here, it was a safety, de safety slash decock lever, and when the gun was decocked, the lever would stay down. Uh, basically, the gun is on safe. Now, to pop it off, for most people, the easiest way to work that type of safety is with a, about a 45 degree thrust of the thumb. If you try to do it off the median joint like you were shooting marbles, you just won't have the strength. That 45 degree thrust gets skeletal support structure going in that direction. But a big advantage of the Beretta over the many other pistols that had the slide mounted safety decock lever was that it seems to be lightly spring loaded and if you come down on it like you were wiping off a 1911, basically that same movement will off safe the gun. Uh, that said, a whole lot of folks figure KISS principle, keep it simple, stupid, insert magazine, rack slide, pull trigger. Mm -hmm. From the safety side of it, uh, I kind of like the manual safety version of the, the M17, simply because when you're, we're talking about a gun for general issue personnel, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, not, not the gun guys. And if you've got somebody who only trains with it once or twice a year and they get the least bit careless with it, it's pretty much a cocked and unlocked pistol and they've got a strap hanging off their gear or something that gets in the trigger guard or more likely a, an errant careless finger. There's nothing to stop it from going bang. So I can see why the Army specified that particular manual safety. Yeah, because the, the version without the manual safety, I mean, it, it brings to the forefront, you know, what I consider the, 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 the only two firearm safety rules that really matter. You know, number one, don't point at anything you don't want to destroy. Number two is keep your finger off the trigger. You know, and it's cr more critical when those guns, you got to make sure you keep the, your finger off the trigger. You know, but it's one of those deals. I know there's multiple safety rules and all that stuff, but in, in my mind, if you don't point at anybody, you don't put your finger on the trigger, Nothing's nothing's going to you know go bad there. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's kind of kind of like the good news is it's easy to shoot, and the bad news is it's easy to shoot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. In addition to the complete 320, which we have at a full size, this is a full size model here. Uh, we also have uh, what we call a carry model, which is the same full length, uh, full size frame with a, a short slide. And then we have one of them that's called the compact with a short slide and a shorter frame that takes the 15 round magazine. But in addition to that, we've got just the, the modules that you can you know, pick up off of wilsoncombat.com and uh, you can take your 320 and we have various versions of it, long, short, you know, tan, black, uh, with and without manual safety, you know, so you can easily customize your own 320, you know, with a with a module and I think you'll find that it's much more ergonomic than the original module, regardless of what model it is. I'll tell you, trying to compare the two, I, I kind of go with the Archie Andrews rule, remember the old Archie comics? Mm. It wasn't Betty or Veronica, it was Betty and Veronica. And if you don't need to choose one adult, get one of each. Yeah. Uh, I've got, I'm carrying today, one of my two uh, Wilson Combat Berettas, and I've had wonderful success with them. And after talking to you, I'm beginning to think I've probably got a Wilson Combat P320 in my future <laughs> somewhere. Well, good deal, yeah. I'm like you, I still really like my Berettas and enjoy shooting them, and you know, I think it's still one of the softest shooting uh, pistols mm -hmm. that's ever been developed as far as the recoil impulse and, and stuff like that. So. 
Um, and as, as you know, I mean, it, almost all Beretta 92 series guns shoot well. They seem to seem to be, you know, inherently accurate. So, you know, I'm not going to throw my Berettas away and switch totally to the 320s, but I'm like you. I kind of like kind of like both. And uh, since we're old codgers, we still like shooting our old 1911s some too, don't we? <laughs> That's the right thing to do. Yeah. <laughs> Folks, thanks for watching. And uh, be sure and subscribe to the Wilson Combat YouTube channel. And uh, be sure and, and ring the bell. And uh, also, uh, there's a place there where you can be uh, notified when there's new content up and uh, a place for you to make comments. We'd like to hear from you. And then uh, also, uh, to keep abreast of everything that's going on at Wilson Combat, uh, subscribe to uh, our e-newsletter. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.